this is your closeout screen. So the clover auto batches um, every single day. It'll always batch out at the same time, whatever time it is that you have uh, asked for the clover to be set for that batch time. So these are the different batches. If you want to look up a day's batch, for this case, um, June 17th, it'll give you a bit more information on you know that particular batch, all the total sales. Batch setup. You can have it ask uh, send you an email with a summary information directly after if you so choose. One of the great things about Clovers is uh, you can track your customers. You can add in customers so that uh, they can come up when you when you use some of the loyalty programs and stuff like that. You can keep track uh, when you do a sale. If you did a, an email receipt or a text receipt, again, you can collect uh, the customer's information. So that's that's where this you would find it on the dashboard. If you have multiple employees, uh, under the employees section here, this is where you can add employees. Um, by adding new employee, you can simply add in first name, uh, last name, email address, and then you can also assign a passcode. So if you want to put, it's always got to be a four digit. So if you put in a passcode there, when they sign in using that passcode, you'll know that that was them that actually signed in. Okay. Under employees, under roles, you can also um, identify what each of the individual um, employees, what type of role that they play within your organization. So you can have, um, you can change one of your employees from an admin to a manager or simply have employee status. And so under roles, you can do that. What I did there, of course, is I clicked on the edit button. So you can also add a new role. So you can create a new type of role that, uh, that uh, you might want them to have. Um, night manager, shift manager, or something like that. Permission side is where you determine the features of your Clover, who's going to have what ability to do. Um, to better explain that, let's say that you wanted to have a refunds. So in this case, a refund here can be done to either a manager or an admin. But someone can also access the manual transaction, both employee, manager, admin. So if I didn't want um, employees to access the manual transaction, I could simply go here, click off employees, hit the save button. And of course, they suggested also not under the refund section, but under the sales section, that we're going to do the same type of permission. So in this case, yes. So that way, under refunds, under manual transactions, to access manual transactions, employees can't do that now. So anybody that was an employee that had the, per, the employee's uh, moniker or, or role assigned to them, uh, they will no longer be able to access managed transactions. However, anybody with the role assigned to them of manager or admin will be able to access manual transactions. Uh, if I wanted to change that back again, I simply click in there and I can type in employee, hit save. I'm going to add it back into the sales side as well. And now all three levels uh, can access manual transactions. So you can go through each of these different types of uh, permissions available. Void transactions, for example, you can allow that only admin can void transactions. Um, so that, you know, someone, if an employee, for example, passes the terminal to a, a customer and they did the transaction, if an employee role had signed in, then because void transactions, if you were to add employees to allow them to do that, the customer would then be able to void the transaction right afterwards. So by limiting the type of permissions that you allow these different functions on your Clover to do, you get to determine who can do what and how it's done. And you can change those anytime. And as you update your dashboard 
here on, on uh, the Clover dashboard. Any of these changes that you make will then update all of the Clovers under this particular MID. So in this case, under this business name, uh, whatever business name that you have, if you have that MID, all the Clovers under that MID will all be updated with whatever changes you make to those permissions. So as you can see, there's a lot more to go through here. Uh, we're not going to go through every one, but again, just wanted to show you where you can access those permissions and how you change those. Employee setup. Uh, this is where you can change it so that you allow unlocking your device without a passcode. So that's where you would see a quick access button on the bottom when you turn on your Clover versus only being able to enter in a uh, four digit code. And if you want to change four digits to a six digit code, you can do that here as well too. So in this case, I set it so that it requires a passcode to log in. So that means that whoever does a transaction, they have to have a passcode that has been assigned to them. And that way we can tell who has what machine. Uh, we can tell what they're doing for sales, et cetera. So it allows us to track that. Shifts is an app that uh, you can download from the Clover App Store. And if you use the Shifts app, um, employees can log in using their passcode again. So as they log into the Clover, it will ask them to log into the Shifts and you can track the hours that are done under the Shifts as well. This Shifts key is really, this app is, is really good as well. If uh, you have a tip options or different servers, where as long as they've logged using the shift app and they log in, they can do a re proper report of all the tips, uh, for example, under their shift. So you can go to the shift app and get a report based on that. And it'll give you the opportunity to, you know, pull off those individual tip reports as well. Uh, set up again, just a couple of options here. So prompt clock out employee to, to clock in. So basically, you want to make sure that they've logged in to use this and restrict clock out if employee has open orders. So if they haven't closed off their their shift for the night, it'll just give them a reminder and let them know that they need to do that. The crew app, this is the new gift card program, one of the new gift card programs that's available uh, through Clover, uh, as is Loyal app, which is uh, another gift card program. More tools. More tools is where you find your different apps. So if you're wondering, uh, if you're looking for a particular app, for example, you can simply search it here and you'll see if there are any particular um, types of apps for what you're looking for. So for example, if I'm looking for a loyalty program, uh, there's loyal app, the loyal light, and as you can see, there's a couple other loyalty programs in the Clover store now as well. So this is where you can, uh, QuickBooks example, this is where you can integrate to your QuickBooks account. Um, some of these are apps are free, such as Schedule, Time Clock, uh, Analytics, Fun Games, <laughs> uh, Gift Card App, So these are where the app is not charging you to use the app uh, on the program. These ones here are paid apps. And of course you can click here and view more. From your dashboard, any of these apps that you look at, um, if you were to choose one to download, for example, uh, you simply hit on the connect or download button. And whatever you download from the dashboard, will also again update all of your clovers okay so this these are under installed apps these are all the apps that we have installed on our clover machines right now um, billing this is where you'll find billing information on the different apps that um, you may or may not have uh, if you have an app that is charging you a monthly fee for example the quickbooks charges I believe six dollars a month for the basic program this is where the billing will show up so under paid apps uh, you'll see if any of the app charges uh, or plan charge this is for the wireless manager one if you use the uh, the 3g chip as well wireless manager again is one of the apps on there 
and this is will show you the sim card uh, uh, what's happening with the sim cards in the individual clover machines so in this case you can see that uh, this sim card is not enabled right now however if you wanted to use it uh, to take this clover out into the field into go visit a customer do a delivery anything like that you can enable the chip once you enable the chip uh, that machine will then allow you to uh, have 3G access to the cellular network in order to do transactions. You can see here we haven't used any gigabytes, but if we had this enabled, you would see you know, the amount of gigabytes that are being used by that chip as well. So this is where you can turn on and off through the dashboard. You can also do it through the Clover device itself by clicking on the wireless manager and again clicking the enable button.